let's take a uh, let's have a little moment of recollection uh, as we fire off some words. Um, whimsical. Whimsical. I don't even know if I've ever used that word in a sentence. I think it means, uh, like, if you say this person has a whimsical nature, that person obeys their whims a lot. Uh, it's got three syllables. Um, I would say it's a really niche word, almost more exotic than a niche word. I, I've never, I haven't really used that one. Let's try another one. Responsibility. Okay, that one's got a lot of syllables, but it's an important word. It's one that you'll use over and over again as an adult. So that's a really good word. It's it's, it's one um, that's nice to have around. Okay, now let's uh, talk about the word that is the topic of this video, which is social. I don't think that this is a real word. I think this is a fabricated word that doesn't actually have a place in a healthy, per a healthy person's life. Um, what the word social means, or what it assumes, is that our words don't have meaning. It assumes that we are like cre animals or or robots that just have a certain set of chemicals inside of our brain that we're trying to manipulate so that the chemical that makes us feel happy is in good supply and is running over our nervous system and making us feel happy and so if we participate in things that are social, then we will m manipulate these humors of ours in the um, target way so that we feel happy. Um, it, it, it makes this, general, this generalization about everyone that we're all just bottles of chemicals that need to be optimized. And if that's true, then life becomes nihilistic really quickly. Uh, there's not really a reason um, f for us to carry on with the burden of civilization. Um, it's kind of depressing and sad if you're the type of person who likes words to have meaning. Um, to get to get to give a certain outline of what words are supposed to do, they're supposed to have meaning, and they're supposed to be kind of like the spells in Harry Potter, where when you say words, it causes an effect, and an easy way to kind of see this is is where, if as you get older, you might get the hang of this. You kind of understand. That when someone talks to you, they are influencing you in a certain way. So if you are out and about and a poor person comes up to you, a homeless person, and says, do you have any spare change? That person has charged you with responsibility. There's that word we talked about earlier of answering a question. Um, if you don't, if you just don't answer the question and keep on, on walking, it's kind of, it's considered a little rude to do that. Not very rude, but kind of rude. You're not really supposed to ignore people when they talk to you. Um, if someone said, uh, hey, dude, I think you're full of shit, kind of randomly, and you ignored that person, that would be more forgivable, especially if it was a stranger. Um, and it wouldn't really be clear why they said that. And that wouldn't really charge you with responsibility. But the homeless person asking if you have any spare change, that I think charges you with responsibility. And I say charge, it takes you from a certain ground level into a raised state. And when you've 
been charged with responsibility. You have a little bit of weight on your shoulders. You feel less comfortable than you did a moment ago. And the ball is in your court, so to speak, to try and do something about this. What you can do is take different actions or say different things to discharge the responsibility. So what you could do is simply say no to the homeless person, whether you've got spare money or not. No, let's not get into how you spend your money. Um, that would be one thing, and that would discharge the responsibility from your soul, from your shoulders, um, from your estate, and you would feel more comfortable after that because you wouldn't feel like you had this guy on a line waiting for your reply. Um, you could alternatively say yes and give him a dollar um, or the change in your pocket, and that would be another way to discharge the responsibility. So it would take you from your elevated state back to a low one. Now, what if you, let's to expand this a little bit, what if you uh, made some kind of purchase and you and for some reason you were able to like postpone the full uh payment of the purchase and then you get you get a bill from whoever sold you let's say it's a stereo system and you get a bill for two hundred dollars that's a really high charge i mean that's kind of like the homeless person asking you for money but now it's uh, like a much greater magnitude of charge. For one thing, if you just say no, that's not going to fly. You have to pay the money. Um, so that's kind of a heavier charge of responsibility. Um, if you're in a relationship, a romantic relationship with someone, and they come up to you one day and they say, hey, I don't think I want to be with you anymore. I don't know if I would call that a charge of responsibility, but it does something to you. It changes you. It puts you in an, that in a state where you kind of have to respond to at least acknowledge the person who's trying to break up with you. If these things are happening at the same time, if you've gotten the bill for the stereo equipment and the person's someone you're in a relationship with is trying to break up with you at the same time, if you were at like a at the beginning of the day down here at a peaceful level then you got the bill and you went to a higher level of discomfort then the person said they want to break up with you now you're at an even higher level of discomfort so what happens in life is you get bills from people of where they say hey please give us this amount of money because you promised you to give it to us or other uh you know things that may make you feel kind of sad these things mess with your level of comfort in life and they influence you they change you um they're like spells in harry potter in this way which is that you felt fine before someone said something to you they spoke words to you and as a consequence of those words being spoken to you you changed and you felt increasingly uncomfortable and you had to go do something about it. Like in the case of the breakup, you could try to say, you know, I, th- I thought we've been working out kind of fine. I'm kind of surprised to hear this. Or you could say, you know what? You're not even worth it. You know, you could, you can do things to react. But my point is that words have meaning. It's not like we go through life and when things, when people say things to us, All we have to do is worry about chemicals in our brain. That's not what the human experience is. So when you say, when you try to use the word social, when you say, well, I feel like socializing, that's the same thing to me. I feel like socializing this evening, so I'm going to go to a party. Um, What you're kind of saying is that you're going to go to a party and you're going to speak gibberish. Nothing's going to matter. Or um, I think sometimes people will say that the the, the, uh, party is a social event, but going to work is not a social event. And therefore, you know, because like the party is something you do for pleasure or something, or it's supposed to somehow when you're at a party, that's when things count, but at work, 
you're it doesn't matter it, it, like you can't you can't meet someone at work and get into a relationship with them but you can do it at a party or some logic like this like you don't not, work is not a perfect vacuum different things can happen there two words still have meaning there um so i don't buy the word social as a means of contrasting different kinds of uh classifications of interacting that you can have because you can't stop someone from bringing up different topics at arbitrary times that's not how life works so it's not really a good contrasting tool. It's not even a good standalone tool to describe the act of uh, spending time with others because we spend time with others whether we like it or not. We spend time with others whether we plan to or not. And even if we're expecting to have a good time, such as at a party, we may not have a good time. Um, we can't predict all these things. But what we can, we can come to some realization that talking and listening to others is going to be constant in our life, that our level of comfort is going to be bouncing up and down, that we're going to be, so to speak, casting spells throughout our life. And if we do that, then what does the word social really do for us? It's redundant. It doesn't add anything to the list of ingredients we need to go ahead and participate in society to be happy. We have this um, pandemic uh, right now with COVID, and one of the things that we're told is to practice social distancing. And when this rule came out, for a little, for a fleeting second, I thought, could this be one of the first uses of the word "social" that makes sense? No, it's not really. Like they're using it in a scientific way. Like the virus, it really does happen at a level beneath what makes us human. And um, just to stand six feet apart, six feet apart from someone, and to express that as social distancing, that's that's a way for us to describe something that's a really low compared to the highness of human language and human interaction. And so it's not really bringing anything to the table. It's just a, a small tool, but it doesn't redeem the so-called word social. Um, there are, are some, some, I guess, versions of the word that you can say are present. You can say that someone is antisocial, but if, if you start doing that, you're just buying into the problem or, or, or being a part of the problem. You're not... I don't I don't go around thinking or saying that anyone is antisocial because that's just going back to what we thought the word social was going to do for us for a second which was be useful and it's not. So just call someone antisocial just because they're quiet like that doesn't accomplish anything. You haven't made you haven't informed anyone of anything because what you've started from is that position which is that words never had meaning to begin with. I mean, who the fuck cares if someone is antisocial if words have no meaning to begin with? If they're if all they're doing is manipulating chemicals inside of this top 5% of their body, what does it matter how many words they say per minute, per day, per week to others? It doesn't matter if that's our position. Social, antisocial, we can discard them. Now, I'm old enough to know that I don't have to go and fight the same old battles day after day. If I'm conversing with some people casually, I'll use the word social. I don't really give a shit. Like, I don't need to convince people of my way of life. That's not something that needs to happen at all. Um, so I'll use the word social from time to time. If I'm in a situation where I don't, if I'm, uh, I guess you could say in a shallow state of mind or in a shallow state of conversation with someone or it is where we're at a surface level of conversation. But if I'm alone and I'm thinking through a problem, 
or trying to have an argument in my head over two points of view and I need to be exacting, to be uh, noble, to be um, reasonable and good, then I won't resort to using the word social. That will not be a part of my vocabulary when I'm by myself and I am having my moments of deepest concentration and reflection. The word social is not allowed in that part of my life. But if I'm just shooting the shit with people, I don't really give a shit. Like, I mean, it's not something that I need to go and convince people of. Um, I'm making this video because I think there are people out there who, I mean, certainly me, I've, I've turned to books in my life or just to, to anything I could get my hands on to try to learn something truthful about my life that I couldn't find somewhere else. And I intend this video to be the kind of resource that someone can use if they're having a philosophical struggle with something. Um, it's the kind of video that I would have appreciated as a teenager. Um, so, you know, it's food for thought and uh, it's what I think. That's it.